Just so you know, this is Queen City STEM. We're here tonight uh, for uh, to be together for a better future. And that's a better future for everyone. Scholars, us as adults and families, that's, that's our goal. So a little bit about us. Uh, we have been open since 2015 and we are chartered through Triad Math and Science Academy. So on our website, you'll see at the bottom under Queen City STEM that we are part of Triad Math and Science Academy. Our mission is to prepare our students to become competent, responsible, and successful individuals in a globalized and technology-based society through strong academic programs, school family community partnerships, and strong teacher-student relationships. And everybody's probably has their camera hidden right now except me, but we all these people that you see on your screen now are present here tonight. Um, as I said, that's I'm Miss Almer, the principal. We have Miss Beatty, who is our dean for the kindergarten through second graders, and Miss Griffith, who is our dean for the third through fifth graders. We also have a support staff that works at Queen City with us, and you'll see their pictures on this screen. We have Ms. Williams present with us tonight, who is probably who everyone has been communicating with. She is our Power School Data Testing Coordinator, um, so she'll be here as well to help answer any questions. We do have um, Administrative Assistant, who also runs the main office, so if you've ever called the school, you've probably talked to Ms. Seeley, or if you've been into the building, you've seen her. Ms. Bagley is our Guidance Counselor. Mr. Bushman is our IT coordinator, so he does everything IT related, even handing out Chromebooks to families. Ms. Grindstaff is our nurse aide, and Mr. Lamone is our operations manager. He did not send me a picture, so he gets that beautiful emoji. <laughs> One question we normally get is what is a charter school? So the best way I can put this is we are still a public school. We are governed by a nonprofit board of directors. And a charter school, if anybody's uh, used to a traditional school setting, um, a charter school you can look at like a school of choice. So we have an open enrollment process uh, that we handle through a lottery and we hold our lottery in February. There is no tuition required to attend our school. There are no academic eligibility requirements. And yes, even though some people think charters aren't, we are still held accountable through the Department of Public Instruction every year by our performance goals. So that's the next question we normally get from parents is, well, what is your grade? So due to COVID last year, no one in the state of North Carolina received a grade for a school report card. So we don't have anything for 1920 due to COVID. Um, 1819, we had a C. Um, and then the years prior to that was a B. I've failed to say this is my second year at Queen City. So I have been the principal for a year and a half. Um, and we've inherited this grade of C and I can promise you that we are working hard as a combined unit. That is parents, students and teachers and faculty to ensure that we get the A rating which our students have the ability to do. Why QCSS? I always ask this question in any interview that we have for an open position. Why would somebody be interested in Queen City? And sometimes they turn around and say, well, why, why should I come to Queen City? So I try to think of the top 10 reasons that we always hear. And we do have a diverse student body and staff. Our staff is extremely caring. We pride ourselves on a family atmosphere within our building. We have an extremely safe environment for everyone. Uh, just recently, and I'll talk about this more, uh, we are the only school in the surrounding Charlotte area that has a smart lab. We have a STEM focused research based curriculum. We follow every single standard course of study that North Carolina Department of Instruction has. We have re remediation and enrichment opportunities. We offer free tutoring and we do home visits. And that's one thing we pride ourselves on is helping form that home school relationship with everybody. Our class sizes and kindergarten through first we have 20 who, with a teacher assistant in the room and second through third we have 20 students that share and the, those teachers on those grade levels share the teacher assistant so they rotate throughout the classes through, during the day and in fourth and fifth our class size is 22 students. 
We do offer special education programs. So we do have students with IEPs and 504s and individualized health plans. Uh, we have resource classes, self-contained classes. We have co-talk classes. Um, so we always get, do you allow students with an IEP or do you allow students with a 504? We allow every student um, to come to our, our school. Another question we get asked now is, well, what have you done for COVID-19 and any sanitation efforts? So I just want to ensure everybody that um, we make sure that all of our staff, students, and families are the safest that they can be while they are in our building. So we have added temperature check stations. We have questionnaire screener that must be completed every day. We installed touchless faucets in all bathrooms as well as touchless soap dispensers. We have hand sanitizer stations throughout the building that we ensure are completely filled. We have um, ordered water bottle fill stations instead of water fountains. Um, unfortunately, these were um, extremely high on everybody's list this year. And so they're on back order, but those water bottle fill stations will be on our campus in March. We have social distancing signs throughout the building to remind everybody to stay a minimum of six feet apart. And we also installed a $15,000 Remy Halo air purification system to purify the air that goes throughout our building. The most successful students at Queen City STEM are those who will be able to learn independently, display a high level of motivations, show a strong work ethic, and driven to succeed academically, exhibit academic strength in math and science, they perform well at an accelerated pace. They demonstrate, demonstrate leadership opportunities. They participate in academic extracurricular activities and they plan to be college bound, whatever that might be, two year, four year or beyond. We have implemented a new program at Queen City. We call it Lion's Tales. And this is a period every single day that we've created to help individualize instruction for our students. The acronym TAILS stands for Time for Activities that Inspire Learning and Success. Um, currently, classes include enrichment opportunities and required remediation for math and reading. In our K-3 classrooms, uh, for kindergarten right now, we have six classes. We do not do early kindergarten enrollment. We have five classes for first grade. We have four classes for second and third grade. And our class size will follow DPI recommendations. As I said previously, we have teacher assistants in all of those grades. Every single day, we devote 90 minutes for reading and 90 minutes for math. And we have that daily enrichment intervention block. In our fourth and fifth grade classrooms, this is the time where we begin to prepare our students for middle school. And in middle school, they rotate teachers throughout the day. So we do the same thing in fourth and fifth grade. Uh, we've designed this as a transition year. Uh, students will rotate for ELA, math, science, and social studies. This year, there's one teacher for each subject. So same thing here for math and ELA, they get a 90 minute block. For science and social studies, they get a 45 minute block. And they rotate throughout all of those classes every single day. We have an emphasis on organization and study skills to help prepare the scholars for independence needed in middle school and beyond. And beginning in the fourth grade, uh, we begin a math track where students have options for grade level, above grade level and advanced. Some activities we do at our K-5 campus, we have field trips. We do STEM nights, we have a fall festival, we do holidays around the world. There's multicultural projects that take place. Um, if, K-5 is infamous for the 100th day of school. That's very important to us. So we do 100th day of school activities. We have spirit days and weeks. And we also do community outreach projects, canned food drive, coat drive. Um, here recently, our CLP students, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, have done a face mask and a glove um, drive as well. Sorry, I lost my words for a second. Uh, our curriculum. For ELA and math, we have My View Literacy for ELA and Envisions Math. What happens during this curriculum is the concepts are introduced, practiced, tested, and continuously reviewed. We have ELA and math stations, and there's also online dashboards that are integrated during class instruction. 
And our literacy objectives are integrated across the entire curriculum, science, social studies, math, and ELA class. So when we talked about math tracks earlier, starting in the fourth grade, um, this is just an example. Um, I put a little tag at the bottom that these are subject to change based on our student population and our needs. But if you're on grade level, obviously you're taking that grade level of math. If you're advanced, then you're basically taking the grade level above. So students coming into the fourth grade are advanced, they're gonna be doing fifth grade math. Students in fifth grade are gonna be doing sixth grade math. And then you can see this transition of how does that transition with them to middle school, they stay on advanced, which is above grade level. By the time they're in the eighth grade, they will be able to receive at least a high school credit. Um, but there are possibilities that they could leave middle school with two high school credits, just depending on how advanced they are and what the population of that looks like. Our science curriculum is through discovery education. What happens in science is the students discover science by doing hands-on learning. They do experiments, making observations, solving real world problems, using science tools and designing experiments themselves and taking it through to the end. Social studies, we cover those five main strands, history, geography, environmental literacy, economics, and financial literacy, civics and government, and culture. And we have special area classes every day. Um, that's part of the student's schedule. They have, we have PE, art, music, computer, and smart lab. So here I wanna pause for a second and talk about the smart lab. Uh, last year, the admin team wrote a grant for the NC Access Grant. It, uh, we were informed close to the end of the year over the summer that we received that grant worth $800,000 for over five years. We were the second highest school in the state of North Carolina to receive that grant. So with that grant for this first year, this is brand new to us, it just was completed in December, we have a smart lab. And as I said previously, we are the only school in our local attendance area that has a smart lab. The closest one to us is in Fayetteville, if that means anything to anybody how far away that is. So here's two pictures over here is our what our smart lab looks like. It's full of computers. All of this on the back wall here is curriculum, hands-on things the students do. We have a 3D printer, we have drones, we have solar ovens, we have a, a studio uh, on wheels basically so we can go anywhere in the building and record anything that we need to. There's a lot that comes with this full of curriculum. The students get to go into this classroom at least once a week to do hands-on projects and there is opportunities for our core classroom teachers to integrate with the teacher for the smart lab so that the students can be able to see cross-curricular connections. We have academic teams. This is just some of our academic teams, Math and Science Olympiad, Kangaroo Math, UB the Chemist, Robotics. These are all based on student interest and are subject to change. We can add, we can take away, just all depends on what our students want to do. We also have student organizations. So we have student council. And then we have, I said CLP earlier in this presentation, that stands for College Leadership Awareness Program. And that's exactly what it means. It's a leadership program where our students are able to go out and do college visits to be able to see what a campus looks like and what they can offer to kind of help um, guide that student in their future. And this starts um, in the fifth grade, but we have been able to add sometimes depending on interest, uh, third or fourth grade, but normally fifth grade for this CLP that carries all the way through to our secondary campus. We have some after school clubs. These are also subject to change based on student interest and any vendor availability. Um, sometimes our teachers also run after school clubs. So that just depends on what their interest could be. Some events that we have at QCSS, we always have a yearly spelling bee. And last year pride ourselves on the fact that our school spelling bee um, went to 
uh, the local competition and won that and made their way to the state competition. Unfortunately, they didn't win the state competition, but they got pretty far. We have guest speakers come in, we do field trips, we have book fairs, STEM fairs, cultural festivals, home visits. And then this year, our administrative team incorporated two other things. So we do a dime with the deans um, the first Wednesday of every month. And we also do a character ed read aloud the first Monday of every month. And so character ed is also something that we focus on within our building every single month is a different character trait. Example this month is courage. There is an application process to be able to attend Queen City. Right now we are accepting applications. You can apply online. And then the deadline for the application will be February the 14th at noon. And then on February the 15th at 10 a.m. in the morning, we will run our lottery. Um, and that's when people will be notified by Ms. Williams if they were accepted into the lottery and if they weren't accepted into the lottery, what number they are on our wait list. And now we have questions and answers. If you have any, any uh, questions about enrollment, the email is enrollment at queencitystem.org. So I'm going to stop share on my screen so I can kind of see what's happening in the Q&A section over here. Okay, ladies, have you, you haven't, haven't answered any questions, is that correct? We have not. Most of okay. them are about how many openings are coming in for kindergarten. Um, the okay. And the uh, same in the chat. Okay, so to answer that question about incoming mm -hmm. kindergarten, as I said, right now, currently we have six teachers. So if we have six teachers with 20 students in a class, our incoming kindergarten class can be 120 students. But that is, um, we have the opportunity for that to change. For example, we could only have five kindergarten students. So example of reason why we would drop one kindergarten teacher is if when we go to lottery on the 15th, if we only have 100 students that applied for kindergarten, then I don't need six teachers. So then we would just have five teachers and obviously all the, of those 100 students would make the lottery to get in if that makes sense. Um, Ms. Baker, what colleges do you all typically visit? Um, here recently, like I said, I've only been here since last year, um, but the colleges that we normally visit are typically within North Carolina. Sometimes we do venture out um, closely to South Carolina, which could be like Winthrop or Spartanburg, anywhere like that. Um, sometimes they will venture to Clemson or to um, University of South Carolina. It just kind of all depends on what the student's interest is. Is a smart lab through creative learning solutions or uh, systems? Um, yes, ma'am, that is correct. That's who we gathered our smart lab with. Um, and then I don't want to pronounce your last name wrong, but Brian, you asked a question. Do we offer before and after school care? Um, it has been offered in the past this year. Um, we have been remote the entire school year, so that right now there's not a need for before and after school care, but we have in the past. Um, but I think I was answering the question about transportation. And yes, we do provide transportation. However, it's not a um, neighborhood pickup all the time. It just depends on which parents are interested in transportation and we do what we call depot stops. So like we have some families in Concord, obviously we can't make it to all of their neighborhoods. So our, serve, our transportation provider, Eagle Bus Company, will set up a depot stop at a multiple places in Concord. And then the families would have to drive to the depot stop. The students would be picked up um, and brought to school. And then in the afternoon, the students would go back home on the bus to that same depot stop. Ladies, I'm going to uh, mute myself because this is Mr. Bushman for tech issues. Um, attendees, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A and I'll be right back. So I don't know if the person is present who asked the question because I didn't pay attention to who asked it, but there was a question 
before we left and before we got kicked off um, about what are we doing step by step to ensure that we can raise our score from a C to an A. Um, so I can kind of speak to that because I was here last year um, in comparison to the years before and also this year. So when we first took over, uh, Ms. Almer and myself came in last year and then Ms. Beatty joined us this year. Um, we did not, we inherited a school that did not have any curriculum and that had also never been trained or taught how to analyze, um, the staff had never been taught how to analyze data. So what we have diligently worked on in the past year and a half is making sure that our students and our staff have access and appropriate training for curriculum. And we have began implementing that curriculum, which is research-based across all K-5 students. In addition to that, we have purchased supplementary curriculum, which is intervention. So if your student isn't performing on grade level, we're actively working on a multi-tier system of support in order to address their deficit and get them back on grade level. And then in addition to that, as Ms. Alm already told you, we have the lion's tails, which is addressing our higher performing students. And that was an area that we had identified using data um, previously that it appeared that our higher students were not making growth or were not showing growth. And so since we identified that as an area of need, we really focused or honed in on what can we do for those students to provide extension to their curriculum. And so um, that is an area of focus now and moving forward in the future as well, making sure that those students are on board. They're not just sitting in classes and not being challenged, but that we are targeting them as well and that we are making specific lesson plans and strategic plans for them to move forward and continue to grow. Um, beyond that, just having conversations surrounding data and training our teachers on looking at the data and using it to inform our instruction. Um, previous to our arrival to QCSS, that was not really a thing, um, but our, our teachers have really hopped into that with both feet. They have just enthusiastically embraced that way of instruction and then tweaking their instruction throughout. And so I really feel confident that we are going to show growth whenever we do take a state assessment. It has just been a little while with pandemic and everything else. Um, it's kind of slowed down what would have shown our progress last year, but this year I think it would show even more. Um, we have some really good questions in the Q&A too. So I will start by answering the question of, are all students K-12 in the same building um, and how are younger students separated? So that's a great question. Um, up until I arrived, all students, we were, it was a K-8 school. So last year we were K-9, this year we're K-10. We will add a grade every single year until we're K-12. So last year was the first year that students were separated we have a secondary campus which is also on mallard creek road is three tenths of a mile from our elementary campus which is my virtual uh, picture behind me that's our elementary campus and so we have k5 in our elementary building and we have six through ten in our secondary campus um, and then within our own building at K-5, we have kindergarten on one hallway by themselves, first grade on one hallway, second and third share a hallway, and fourth and fifth share a hallway. So, Ms. Reinhardt, I hope that answers that question. Um, are all teachers certified? That's a great question. So, at uh, another difference with charter schools is that all teachers do not have to be certified. So I will answer by saying, no, all of our teachers are not certified. However, over 50%, I think this year we're at 70 or 75% of our teachers are certified. And those who are not certified, part of their contract states that they have to be working towards a certification in the area that they are teaching. So I hope that answers that question too. Um, just so you know though, Though it doesn't matter if they're certified or not certified, we work with all of our teachers to ensure that they are providing every single one of our students um, high quality instruction within the classroom. We do daily walkthroughs and we have um, meetings with them. Some of Sometimes it's not one that we want to have, but we have to have it because our students are our number one priority. Every single thing we do at school is based around them. Uh, policies in place to ensure students safety 
Um, I'll just kind of talk about some safety measures we have in place. And if that doesn't answer the question, then just put another question in and I can answer that one. So when you enter the front door of our building, you enter into the lobby area, as that's what I'm gonna call it. And that is uh, closed off from the rest of the school. So you can only enter into the lobby. You're not allowed into the rest of the school unless you are checked in, scanned your driver's license to make sure everything's good to go and we know where you're going. So you have to have a meeting within that building to get past that door, which you're buzzed through to get in. Um, within the building, once the students get into the building, all of our outside doors are locked. Um, students are not allowed past that door to enter the lobby area during the day unless they are accompanied by a staff member. Um, our playground in the back of our building um, last year was the first year we had a playground and over the summer we put in a fence so it is entirely fenced in and nobody can get in from the outside it has those safety buttons on it where you have to from the inside push to open the gate to get out so you can't be on the outside of the gate to be able to open it and come in to the playground area and that playground area being fenced in um, there's multiple entryways into the building if we needed to get back into the building while we were out there. So I hope that answers that question. Um, social studies and science are taught 45 minutes a day. That's all classes, all grade levels. And then let's see, will kindergartners that homeschooled in 2021? I will let Ms. Williams answer that question. Can you see that, Ms. Williams? Will kindergartners that homeschooled for 2021 be put into first grade or would they start as kindergartner? I know there's documentation we would need. Yeah, just like any kid that came from a homeschool, as long as you can show that they completed um, the kindergarten classes, then that would be fine and they would be placed into first grade just like a regular kindergartner would, yeah. Oh, Ms. Reinhardt, um, this is, that's awesome. I, I didn't know that you had a smart lab in upstate New York. Did I hope that same company put yours in. Um, it is amazing and, and I will say it's exciting. It's definitely the heartbeat of our school building and we cannot wait for the students to get back in to be able to experience this. Anybody else have any questions? For us, please put them in the Q&A or you can put them in the chat if you can see that. Or if you would rather raise your hand, I do have the ability to um, unmute you and allow you to talk as well. So whichever you would prefer, we wanna make sure that we get all of your questions answered tonight so that whenever you get that message from Ms. Williams on February the 15th, you can say, yes, you do want to be part of Queen City STEM School. I hate not being able to see everybody. Okay, I have uh, Nassim Mohammed. I'm going to allow you to talk. You might have to unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, hi, Oliver. Thanks for giving me opportunity to talk with you. Yes. My, my question is, uh, uh, I have two daughters. So first uh, daughter, we got her admission as an early kindergarten, uh, I think um, like four, four, five years back. But now uh, for the second daughter, she, she has the uh, birth date after th August 31st. So uh, the, the Queen City STEM school will be considering as a early kindergarten uh, child or not? We do not do early kindergarten enrollment as of right now. So if that changes, um, then we will be able to look at whoever has applied uh, for our lottery to be able to reach out to them. But at this point in time, we do not have the ability to do early kindergarten enrollment. So you are saying that first uh, uh, you will give the opportunity for the kindergarten uh, student who, who has already five years 
if there are vacant seats then probably you will look into and give the opportunity to the uh, parents no, no even if there's vacant seats we're not we don't do early kindergarten enrollment okay. at this time if something changes then we'll be able to reach out to any parent who applied for early kindergarten okay Does that because, answer? Um, the question is uh, when i was trying to apply for the early kindergarten it was not allowing me to apply because so, yeah because we don't have that option right now in the so, case, how I will be getting the notification whether I will follow us on our social media and check our website and you can always call the school or email Miss Williams um, to just check in okay okay yeah thank you so much thank you All right, I don't see another hand raise but we do have some questions so uh, do kindergarten lottery drawings typically end in a wait list in your experience? So in the past, the answer to that is yes. Like I said before, if we have, we have six teachers, 20 students in a class, if we have 120 um, students who apply for kindergarten, then everybody basically gets in. But if we have 150 apply for kindergarten, then we're going to have 30 on the wait list, if, if that makes sense. And then um, typically we do have some people who get accepted and then decline to come. And so if that happens, then let's say Ms. Williams got accepted and she declined, then we would go to the wait list, the first person on the wait list and we would contact them and they have so many days to accept uh, that opportunity to come to Queen City. If they don't accept within that time, then we go back to the wait list to whoever number two who had now moved up to number one would be. Um, the application is on the website, Ms. Baker. So if you go to queencitystem.org and give it just a second, there's gonna be a message that pops up about the lottery and you can click a link from there and join to fill out your lottery application. Um, I see the name of Parna. So, um, did you join the webinar late? Unfortunately, we had technical issues and about halfway through our presentation, or we finished the presentation, we were doing questions and answers, um, we got kicked out for some reason. So if you want to email me, I'll be more than happy to share my presentation with you. And if you have any questions from that presentation, you can just email me and I don't mind responding to you or even calling you and talking about it. I hope that helps. And then the question about early kindergarten enrollment, uh, what does that mean? That means a student who um, is not five by August 31st. That's the cutoff time in the state of North Carolina. Any other questions from anybody? Oh, let me see. I didn't scroll down. Let's see. Uh, Padma, I'm not sure what you mean by the after class program. So if you have the ability to raise your hand, I can unmute you and you can ask me because um, I'm not sure if you're talking about the after school program, um, anyone, if we have the after school program in kindergarten through fifth grade would be able to attend that. And um, before, if it's the before school and after school program, yes, it normally does run for five days a week, if that answers your question. Um, last year, we did have a wait list for kindergarten. Mr. Isaac, um, answering your question, and then, okay, so great question. Says, are you all moving towards in-person classes during this upcoming year or doing mostly remote or mixed? Will students in person wear masks all day? All right, so as of right now, currently, our board has said that we are still remote 100%. So what they're looking for is our metrics in Mecklenburg County to definitely decrease. Once they decrease, 
um, to whatever that specified number will be that they will be looking for, then they will say, we will come back to the building. Um, we would prefer, I feel the board would prefer to come back 100% face-to-face, uh, -face, but that's all dependent upon our parents and what our parents are wanting as well. So we're listening to them, we're reaching out to them, asking them to please let us know their thoughts and where they are. And whenever we reached out at the beginning of the year, we had 80%, 75, 80% of our parents said they wanted to do remote. And so that's where we are. We've reached out again and that's still where they are. And as everybody knows, our numbers aren't looking good right now when it comes to percent positive um, in our area. And so <clears throat> right now it doesn't make sense to move back to the building if our percent positive cases in Mecklenburg County are higher than they were whenever the beginning of the year started. And so as of right now, still following uh, protocols that have been put in place by the governor, yes, anyone in the building must wear a mask at all times. Teachers, staff, students, parents, visitors, masks will remain on um, unless it is lunchtime. That's a mandate put in place. Uh, and to answer the question, how has virtual learning been going this school year? I, I'm going to say great, <laughs> if that's what you're looking for. Um, we've been doing this since, I don't know, March the 16th, if that's the correct date. And we had in our calendar last year anyway to have digital learning days that, that were put in before this even happened. So this happened and we just kind of picked up where we had left off with our digital learning days and it's just, it's kept going. Our students are in class. Not, well, their schedule is nine to two. They have a 45 minute to an hour lunch break depending on the grade level that they're in um, every day. And they're on a Zoom or virtually in a class from nine until 12. And then the rest of the time is for them to do their work. But all of that also depends on the grade level they're in as well. We try to keep uh, FaceTime down to a minimum for our lower grades and then fourth and fifth grade are on line a little bit longer than the rest of them. So I hope that answers that question. And yes, there are opportunities for parents to volunteer. We would love for our parents to volunteer and come help in classes, in the building. Um, if you want to come help in the cafeteria, <laughs> you want to help outside at recess, and we have plenty of things. You want to help at car rider, drop off and pick off, pick up, we would love it. Um, do students wear uniforms? Yes, we are a uniform school to answer that question. And will kindergartners have access to the smart lab? Every single student K-5 will have access to the smart lab. And that smart lab, that curriculum consists of a bunch of stuff. There's robotics, there's digital design. I, I could, it could take me all day to name it. It's all technology STEM based curriculum for the smart lab, if that helps. There's a lot of them doing hands-on, creating things. Um, you know, example is trying to make the light bulb come on by using open and closed um, circuits, if that helps with that one. Um, as I said, uh, all students are remote. Their classes will meet anywhere between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. Hope that answers that question. Uh, Chromebooks are for all students K-11. They are distributed to all students. So we have a new shipment coming in the end of the month. And when that shipment gets here, we're um, crossing our fingers that that will now make us one device for every single student. So one to one. These are all great questions, by the way. Thank you all so much for participating and asking.
Any other questions? Once again, you can put it in the chat, you can put it in the Q&A portion, or you can raise your hand, whichever works best for you. Got a couple more questions come through, it looks like. Oh yeah, here it is. Typing skills taught to students. Uh, yes, that will be part of the computer class that they take. Students will be taught typing skills. Did I miss one or? There was a question about after school. How does after school work? Um, this year oh. we've been fully remote. It's We haven't had after school, but next year we would have, ideally we're gonna have some form of after school either in the way of clubs or in the way of a before and after school program. Right. Um, and that will work differently depending on student need. Right. So basically we are, just like we are pursuing the weighted lottery and we're participating and meeting the needs of educationally disadvantaged students, um, there will be some financial aid potentially for students who um, fall into that category. And then there will be clubs and other offerings after school tutoring for other students who do not. So it kind of depends on the individual situation for that before and after school program. I hope that's one from Padma because I'm going to dismiss it. Yeah, I think. Yeah. OK, um, foreign language exposure. That's a great question as well. So currently at the K-5 campus, there is not a foreign language class. We are um, just determining, determining if it's an opportunity, if that's an opportunity that we can explore. Uh, beginning in sixth grade, our students begin a foreign language exposure. Okay, so a question in the chat. So I don't know if anybody's new to this, so I'll try to explain this process to everybody. So our current students enrolled with us, they got sent um, intent to return forms is what they're called. So it's basically their opportunity to tell us if they're intending on coming back to Queen City next year. Once we get those intent to return forms back, which will be the end of this month, uh, Ms. Williams, myself and the admin team will sit down and look at how many say they're coming back and look at the number of teachers we have. And then that will help us determine the seats that we would have left for that grade level. And then that's how we determine how many students to pull for each grade in the lottery. I hope that answers that question renew um, right now I can't tell you what the chances are we have like a hundred sixteen kindergartners um, in six classes depending on if they all come back or whatever says yes they're coming back we'll we'll determine how many spots or seats we will have for first grade and once again, the timing for kindergartners for remote sessions, everybody starts at 9 a.m. And most sessions are over with by 12. Some sessions are over a little earlier, 11.45, 11.40-ish. It just depends on the grade level. And I don't have that timing exactly handy right now, but I think kindergarten ends at like 11.40, 11.45 to go to lunch. And then the rest of their day consists of them completing assignments on their own. Um, some of them attend tutoring sessions with their teachers. Some of them attend tier two sessions with their teachers. It just all depends on the student. I hope that answers that question. Yes, so when school buses go back into effect, they also have protocols that they must follow. And part of that is being sanitized and disinfected regularly. At this point in time, if we were in school, it would only be one child per seat. And so therefore, um, 
when they pick them, that child will be assigned that seat. That's the seat they sit in. And then when the bus gets to our campus to drop the kids off, they would have to sanitize everything. And then when they come back in the afternoon, they'd have to sanitize everything before the kids got on. There is a school bus service, but um, this our school bus service is considered a depot stop. So once we get back ready to come back into the building, we will survey our families to see who is interested in a, uh, riding the bus to school. And from there, it would uh, the school bus company would determine where the nearest depot stop for the bulk of the students would need to be for them to get on the bus. We do not guarantee neighborhood pickup. With that being said, it's not a guarantee an example of a neighborhood pickup is we do have an apartment complex across W.T. Harris that we had 45 students in that apartment complex last year that rode the bus. And so that basically was a neighborhood pickup, but we cannot guarantee that for everybody. Um, yes, we do do environmental sustainability and science curriculum classes. And it's funny that the question is, do we have a school garden? because that was part of one of our grants that we wrote for last year. Um, however, unfortunately we did not receive it, but we do have teachers who are extremely into a school garden and is on our radar to continue to try to figure out the best way to get one installed for our students. Hope that answers that question. Any more questions? Great question, school lunch. So um, <laughs> we ha currently, if we were in the building, our school lunch would be offered through a vendor. Um, and not necessarily free and reduced. We um, are in the process and we are on the tail end of closing out this process of being approved for a national, the National School Lunch Program. So I'm hoping um, that comes within the next few weeks. Um, once we get that approval, there will be school lunch um, provided for every student. And from that point, once we're approved for national school lunch program, we'll be able to provide free and reduced lunch costs to our students who qualify. I hope that helps answer that question. But as always, we have students who bring their lunch every day, or we have parents who drop their um, school lunch off. We also have parents who use Uber Eats or Jimmy John's down the street or whatever any of those other food service deliveries are that will drop the lunch off in the front office for the students to come pick up whenever their grade level goes to lunch. I do want to be mindful of everybody's time tonight. Um, we have two minutes on the schedule left. I'm willing to answer any questions that you all have. But if you don't have any, please, um, if you haven't already, go to our school website, queencitystem.org, and wait just a few seconds and a little message box will pop up and you can click a link in that message box to apply. And then we will do our lottery on February the 15th at 10 a.m. in the morning. And shortly after that lottery, uh, if you are one of the ones accepted through the lottery, you will get a message from Ms. Williams. And then you'll be in back and forth contact with Ms. Williams of everything that you will need to finish the enrollment process. Um, if not, you'll also have an email from Ms. Williams that says where on the wait list you are. but promise you please do not worry about the number on the wait list because um, it's easy to to kind of click off the wait list as we go along <clears throat> we have people who move all the time so um, you know out of state another country so we always have positions that we can put somebody in I want to say thank you again for everyone who has come tonight to this virtual meeting, it is not ideal. Um, I would much rather see everybody face to face and be able to give you a tour of the building. 
but unfortunately at this point in time we can't do that so um, please if you have questions don't hesitate to reach out to any of us that are on here our contact information is on our website um, we look forward to partnering with partnering with every single one of you and having your children um, be a part of our line family um, at Queen City so um, just wanted to say that thanks again I hope everybody continues to stay safe and healthy um, and any anything a question comes up please just reach out to us